Uh, hello everyone, it's Peter. Uh, welcome you back. Uh, today we will continue uh, with some uh, topics in DynamoDB and uh, uh, Elastic IP address. So first I uh, forgot one co important concept called the DEX. Uh, DEX, the full name is Dynamo, DynamoDB Accelerator. Okay. So for this, the, the explanation of DEX, uh, let's go to I think this one, uh, is Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator uh, DEX. So DEX is a fully managed, highly available in-memory cache for Amazon DynamoDB that delivers up to 10 times performance improvement. So simply saying, uh, if you want to increase the performance of the DynamoDB, so you can create a cache. The cache is called a DEX, but this one, you don't have to do it by your own. So Amazon provides this service called the DEX. You can add a DEX for your DynamoDB and it will improve your performance. So it's much faster. Uh, from from my personal experience, uh, DynamoDB is already very fast itself. is already very fast. Uh, but if you have a huge amount of data, like big data, uh, for the search, so and the DEX will be very helpful. Uh, so this is a concept. Uh, maybe uh, if you want to go to deep inside, and you can practice. But uh, if you don't have enough big data, so DEX will not show that much uh, benefit uh, for that. So just I give a concept. Now, next, uh, I deploy my code. Uh, last time we finished uh, uh, this release 2.0 and uh, I deploy my code to uh, ECS. Uh, so I want to go through a, uh, some uh, point of ECS. So now let's go to the ECS. How do you do that? Uh, let's go to ECS. Mm -hmm. uh, go to ECS, uh, so in the ECR, uh, you follow the same procedure uh, and uh, in the repository, uh, I upload 2.0. I already did 1.1 uh, because 1.1 is the version that I used the EC2 instance uh, with the putty to uh, get my Docker image. So I uh, assume you don't have the Docker installed on your local laptop, you can use EC2 instance. Uh, you can open, uh, you can start an EC2 instance and uh, download Docker and build image from there. Uh, so you can see my previous video to for, for that part. Uh, and then anyway, uh, this one I, I I upload my Docker image from my, my local. So I have two versions, EMP service 1.0 and 2.0. 1.0 is uh, the, the database is from embedded uh, H2. And the 2.0, the database is from the uh, DynamoDB. Uh, from DynamoDB. After you have this repository, then uh, you can go back to, uh, let's go back to ECS. So you need to update your task definition. So here is your task definition. So I already updated to my uh, third edition. So if you have like a uh, task 201, you can, you can use uh, this action called uh, uh, deregister. Uh, deregister will remove the task definition. So if you want to create a division, let's go back to the task definition. From this task definition here, you can create a new revision. Uh, now I don't have to create any new re revision, so you can go through it. So in this one, in this container, uh, in this container you can click it, you can uh, up, uh, update it from 1.0 to 2.0. Okay? And everything keep the same, you can update. Uh, you can update, here okay, I cancel it, and then finally, you can create. If you create it, it will get a new uh, number, okay? So I don't want to do that if you, uh, for, on your side, you need to, to do that. So after that, so this one could be uh, the column four or column five and, and so on, okay? So you just update your uh, task definition. And then after that, uh, you go to the cluster, uh, and go to this cluster, training cluster, and in the EMP service, you can click this one, you can update the EMP services. So here you can make sure the revision part is the three, it's the latest one. If it's the old one, like 201, uh, so then you, you need to update. And after you update this one, you can finally, you can click next step or skip review to finally you update. Skip to review, and finally you can update the service. So it means that you, 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 you don't have to redo the uh, service part or redo the definition part again. Just uh, you update the task definition, you update the service, that's it. Now, here I cancel it. 
After that, so still your version is still older version. So next part is important. You go to your EC2. Uh, so you need to make the new version working. So you need to stop the old instance and start a new one. Uh, start a new one. Okay. Uh, I will show it later because every time you can see I terminate the old one. If you see this one, uh, there's no address. So every time you start a new EC2 instance, is uh, this public IPv4 DNS is different. It's different. So it's not a fixed IP address. So it, it, it's big a headache. For example, if I want to create, uh, if I want to create a, 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 a SOAP UI uh, file with the uh, address, so every time you start a new version of the EC2, I have to change my address, right? So then how to solve this problem? Then this, uh, we can have the elastic IP address. So this comes to the picture. Now, let's talk about that. Uh, so this is ECS. Let's go to the elastic IP address. Uh, so this session. So in the elastic IP address here, you can click here, elastic IP address. Uh, I already created one. Uh, I, I checked the price. So if you have uh, in a free tier, you can have only one elastic IP address. If you have two, you will be charged. Okay, I already created one, uh, create this IP address. So to create this IP address is very easy. You just allocate the Elastic IP address and it give you the give the uh, let's give give the uh, uh, region and then uh, everything you keep the same and then you allocate. You just create the, everything you use the same one. You can allocate. So uh, after that, I just generate. I just use only one IP. This is IP. This IP after that you can use action. You can select this. Uh, this is my IP address. This is a fixed one, but it can associate with your EC2 instance. So you can see it associated with elastic, uh, elastic IP address for, for this one. So you can select to the instance. So I will do it later. Right, let me let me go back. So I will show you uh, from EC2 instance part. So uh, this is the old one. If I want to uh, launch the new one, so I simply Stop instance. I don't terminate. You can also say terminate, but now I don't want to terminate it, so I just stop instance. I stop it. Stop. Okay, let's wait for a while. You will see some interesting thing happening. After you stop it, you don't have to do anything. Just wait, it, wait there, and the ECS will launch a new instance for you. And after it launches a new instance, it means it will use the new version of your code. Okay, it's two point zero. Let's wait for a while. It's stopping. After it's stopping and, uh, and launch a new instance, the IP address will be changed. But if you associate with uh, Elastic IP address, then the Elastic IP address is, is a fixed IP address. Uh, uh, it's stopped. Then let's refresh it and stop. Still wait for a while. It finally will be uh, shut down and terminated. Oh, this is stopped. Let's say this is the IP address 485.113.88. And uh, let's see. So then it's shutting down. Okay. 
So see that I I I, I didn't reboot anything, right? I just refresh, refresh. So this one is terminated, and a new one is pending. The pen, new pending one, you can see this IP address should be different from the previous one, from the from the second down one. Now it's already gone, right? So then this we go to this one. No, it's running. Uh, it's running. So let's wait for a while until this uh, uh, Spring Boot is started. So if it's running, then let's go back to this IP address. Okay. So you will have to uh, reassociate this IP address with the new instance. Okay. So then you do the action, associate elastic IP address. Okay. So you choose an instance. So this is a new instance. It's a running instance. I click this one and I keep everything the same and associate. And you can set, allow this elastic IP address to be reassociated. You can check out, uh, check this one and then associate. Okay. It means this IP address is associated with the new instance. So when you generate this uh, uh, with the same IP address, right? So this is a 54, 85, 11, 113, and 88. I don't have to change my SOAP UI, uh, the URL, and uh, it will work. So uh, let's go to the request. Uh, so this one, then let's go back to the DynamoDB. Let's see the table. Yeah, after some tests, I already have some uh, examples in the test. We have Cindy, we have Tommy, we have Jason with different uh, salary. And uh, then uh, for this one, let's run it. Okay, you get the result. Now, let's save another one. Uh, let's save, let's save, let's save a new one. Let's save for, uh, uh, let's say Robert with this one, say 62. Okay, let's save it. It's 62. So go back here, then let's refresh. So Robert is here, right? 62. So from this one, you can see, uh, I don't need to change my uh, uh, SOAP UI. Uh, I can fix uh, the URL. This is fixed one. You can always play with this uh, IP address. You don't have to be bothered with the IP address after every time you uh, upload a new version of your code. Right? So because you always need to change your code and update to a newer version, and after the newer version, and the, uh, so from the whole procedure, okay, I want to give a summary. So that is uh, in ECS, you can always upload a new uh, Docker image to the repository, right, with a different version like 2.0, 3.0, and so on, right. After that. In the task definition, you can use the same task definition. You can you can use uh, create a new revision, and to attach the new Docker image to this task definition, and then go back to cluster. You can go to the service, right? You can click service and use update to update this service to to attach this service with the latest uh, task definition, okay? uh, the, the the latest revision of the task definition. After that, then you can go to EC two. Okay? So you can go to the EC2, and then you can stop uh, the, the previous instance. And uh, after it is fully terminated of the previous instance, and then the ECS will automatically generate an instance for you. Uh, will automatically create an instance for you. The reason is, uh, if I go to the uh, ECS, uh, if I go to the ECS, when we generate the cluster, uh, the cluster already tells you uh, the story. Okay. So in this task uh, one, so in this cluster, 
I think when we generate the task, you can go back to the video when we generate the task, uh, generate this uh, cluster, it guarantees that at least one instance is running. Uh, it, it needs at least one EC2 instance. So it's scalable. When this instance is missing, there, if there's no instance, it will generate an instance for you. So after that, uh, after you stop the previous instance, and uh, the system will automatically generate a new one, start a new EC2 instance. And then the new EC2 instance will hold the, the latest code, and you can run with this code. But the, the problem is, every time you launch a new EC2 instance, the IP, IP address, uh, this IP address will be changed. Then how to solve this issue? We can then we come to the elastic IP address. We can create uh, we can create an elastic IP address. This is a fixed is a fixed IP. Okay. As I mentioned here. Then after you, you launch a new uh, EC2 instance, you can associate this IP uh, with the new uh, new uh, uh, EC2 instance, so that you can always use the same uh, uh, same source of UI code to make a test. Okay. So that's the whole story. That's the whole story. So then you don't have to worry about uh, the the new code, right? Every time you up, uh, you uh, you upload your code, uh, you update your code and uh, and generate the new image, and you follow the same process and again and again. Uh, you can have a new revision of the task definition and a new revision of the service, and you can launch a new EC2 instance and associate a new EC2 instance to your fixed uh, Elastic IP address. And that's it. And then you can always make those tests. You don't have to rebuild the test. That's all for that's all for DynamoDB and EC2 and ECS. So this is very, very important. This is the routine job in the industry, everyday everyday job. So you always need to have update your own code. And finally, you make a new release. And this release will be deployed to AWS and follow the whole process. Right. Now, next is another big topic. It's called Lambda function. Uh, I, I would rather, I'd rather say that the Lambda function is what something that I never uh, uh, faced before, uh, before I learned uh, AWS. Okay. Uh, so Lambda function is very good. And also it has some uh, uh, disadvantage I will talk about later. Uh, so what is a Lambda function? So I give a, this is the official website uh, to discuss about what is a Lambda function. So Lambda is a computer uh, computer service that lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. So simply saying, Lambda function is designed for serverless application, serverless, without server. Okay. What is a serverless application? Okay. So as the REST API, uh, we just deploy it, right? EM, employee services. It's a server based, right? We have to launch an embedded server from Spring Boot, like Apache Server uh, or Tomcat. Uh, that's a Tomcat server. Uh, that's a uh, that's server based application. And the non server based, like what we call serverless, uh, we have different use cases in industry. For example, uh, a, a big example is that we have some routine job to migrate our data from the traditional database to our DynamoDB. For example, uh, every day you may have a program. Uh, you can do a scheduling, uh, and uh, you you retrieve data, the latest data, uh, maybe updated yesterday or saved yesterday. You retrieve those data from your relational table, for example, transactions, and then uh, from those those relational table and uh, create a CSV file, and this CSV file will drop to uh, uh, AWS S3 folder, and then this one will trigger an event. And this event will go to the Lambda function. And the Lambda function will, will help you to process the file and finally save the file to the DynamoDB. Uh, so that's a very typical use cases. Uh, so when DynamoDB uh, is introduced in the, in the system. Okay. Now, let's start with a very simple AWS Lambda. So to do a Lambda function, we have to do some preparation. Uh, first, let's go to S3. S3 is a simple storage service. So if you go to S3, it's just like uh, our file system, but the, the internal concept of uh, S3 is different. Okay, let's talk about this one. Uh, create a bucket. Uh, 
we we don't say create a file folder. I uh, just create a bucket. I can create a bucket. Uh, let's say the bucket name. I can use uh, the training data. Uh, let's use this one. It's called the training data. Uh, this training data is uh, they. Is ACL disabled or enabled or disabled? So we can skip this part. And then you can block public access. You can make it public or you can make it uh, private. Usually we make it private. Uh, for S3, I will have uh, some more topics to cover. Uh, not not difficult, it's, uh, it's quite pretty easy. And then uh, this one, there's a version. Uh, you can have different version for the same file. You can upload it uh, for different version. So this version, I disable the versioning. So I can, for the versioning part and the the public access part, I will use another uh, folder to discuss about that. Uh, use a, that's, that's in a different session. Now, the tag is the same. Uh, and you can have a default in, 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 uh, encryption. That's, the S3 will automatically encrypt your data. You can enable it or like social encryption or disable it. Just we don't have to enable the, our data. There's an advanced setting. Is of your lock, you just disable it, right? So I just keep the uh, all the default settings, then create a bucket. Uh, oh, so because the bucket name is uh, uh, is unique through all the AWS, okay? so it means somebody else uh, they use the same name. So this is. Uh, uh, this is actually for me is a headache. So how do I create this one? Uh, I I need to think about that name. Uh, I always start with training. Um, uh, let's say uh, okay. Let me use the EMP. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, I need to create a bucket to hold all the Lambda functions. So I can use training Lambda. This name is all, also exists. So it's hard to find a meaningful name with a different name uh, from the system. So training uh, uh, Lambda. Uh, Maybe I give um, uh, give some uh, numbers, right? So let's see, training lambda uh, one zero uh, one zero. Okay, I think this is a unique name. Okay, just just find a bucket name. Okay, so if you cannot find a meaningful bucket name, so add some numbers. Okay, some teachers uh, behind. So I think training dash lambda. There are lots of people use this name. So I add some number. Okay, and then go ahead. I can create this lambda. This is called a training lambda one zero one zero. So this lambda is used to hold our lambda functions. Uh, and I will create another uh, folder to have my data. So training data. Also one zero one zero. Okay, I think I believe this one uh, will hold the data and create a bucket. Okay, so I create two uh, bucket. So from file system is called a, a folder, and from the S three is called a bucket. So if I select any of them, uh, okay. So. In this object, uh, training data, this one, so you can have properties. So this property has an Amazon resource name. So each service or each, uh, like your user, your user group role, everything has an ARN. Okay? We simply say ARN. So in this ARN, uh, training data, training data 1010, this is the bucket name. And if you upload a file, then this is the, uh, is the key. Okay? File name is the key, and this is the bucket. So this one, I just give a very simple introduction, and we will discuss uh, uh, S3 in a separate session. Okay, just uh, I generate uh, the two. I just generate the two uh, bucket. One is to hold all the lambdas we uh, we created during the uh, class, 
and another is to generate some data, uh, is to upload some data. Now, uh, this is the lambda, so this is one thing. The second thing is, let's uh, duplicate this one, is I need to have a row to handle lambda. Okay, let's go to IAM. Now let's go to the rows. So I want to create a row. Now, this row, uh, as I discussed before last time, we create a row for EC2, then this time I create a row for lambda. Okay. Uh, so for lambda, then if I call lambda, uh, lambda invoke, so these things, uh, lambda execute, so uh, there's a AWS Lambda basic execution role. Uh, I think this one uh, should be always there. It's Lambda basic execution role. This this is the basic one. So then I go to next. Okay. There's a role name. The permission is Lambda basic execution role. So this is the basic one. Uh, and I give a name. It's called a training Lambda role. Last time we have training EC2 role, right? Allow Lambda function to call EC AWS service on your behalf. Okay, I just give the default description, and then, uh, okay, create a row. Okay. Now, if I search for training, start with training. So we have two rows. The one is training EC2 row, and the one is uh, training Lambda row. Okay. So in the I will. Check training lambda row is uh, uh, lambda basic execution row. So it means that using this row, I can execute the lambda function. Okay. So now this is a preparation. Okay. So uh, we have a clear row, create the three bucket. Okay. And the lambda function is purely in core Java code. Okay. It doesn't have any framework like Spring. So we don't have the like stereotype. We cannot create the object automatically. We have to manually create the object. But for service code, uh, we can use a singleton to represent those objects. Uh, now let's go back here. Uh, I will generate a very simple lambda. Uh, and start from here, and we will have another session to go to the deep into the lambda function. So how to create lambda? Then in the file, uh, I can new. So you assume you already add the AWS plugin, right? So if you go to help, uh, the it is marketplace. Let's wait for a while. Okay, if you search AWS, so you should have AWS toolkit for Eclipse 2.0. So this is already installed, right? It's already installed. So you have to install this plugin. Okay. So it's already I already mentioned this in the in the setup, uh, environment setup. So with this you can new uh, AWS Lambda Java project. If do this one, not the Maven project, but uh, AWS Lambda project Java project is still in the Maven format. Okay. I give a name. So the group ID is always this one. Uh, I just say uh, project name. Uh, is uh, the uh, hello lambda uh, hello lambda and the artifact ID is uh, uh, just a demo okay I just use demo version is one point zero and then next is the class name uh, so it is a lambda function handler I just change the name I say uh, hello function handler just a very simple hello and the input type. So we can have lots of input, like this is S3 event, a typical one like S3 event, DynamoDB event, SNS event, and uh, others, uh, I, I didn't use them, I used the three of them. And you can use custom, custom is the user customized input, you can use custom. So th this makes things very simple, it's custom, and I click finish. Okay, so this is the way to uh, this is the instruction of how to upload your Lambda to, uh, from the Eclipse plugin to your AWS. Okay. No. So this is hello function handler implements request handler with object. The input is object, so this is handle request is also object. So I can I can change the input to a string. 
Uh, so you can change this to string. So here is a lock. Uh, input is input. And uh, you can say hello. Uh, return hello plus the input. Input could be a name uh, from Lambda. Okay. So I use a very easy code. Okay. It's hello Lambda. Let's save it. So there's a test. Uh, I will skip all the tests. Uh, I don't need this test anymore. I don't need this test. So let's go to the pawn. You see the structure is the same as Maven. Let's go to the pawn. So I, I will use a, a better pawn uh, than this one. So, okay. I can use a good format. Uh, I, will, I don't, won't change this one. Uh, and uh, for the dependency part, okay, I will add the J unit, uh, J unit five. So in the dependency, there are two parts. One is dependency management, okay, and another one is dependency. Uh, I will use a better one. Let's let let me uh, go to some code before. Let's see project AWS. Let's let's import some uh, typical lambda. Uh, let, okay, let's say hello lambda. What this one? Oh, still the old one. I I, I want to, to find someone with the uh with the new uh the good format. Uh like let's say STS. Okay. Okay, I think this one is good. Uh, let's go with this one. Package version. Uh, let's give a name. Uh, let's give a name. Uh, let's say it's a hello lambda function. And then with property, they, this one is use a unit, use the unit five. Okay, okay. Jupyter in the platform version. Uh, and uh, this dependency management, uh, I only need this one. I do step by step. This is the default one, so I want to create a new one. This is dependency management. So here, you can see dependency management. I think it's the same. Uh, two fifty six. This is 243, that's the old one, so I just remove this one. Then dependencies. Okay, let's go to this one, dependencies. So in this dependency, so I have Java events, Java call, uh, and uh, uh, this is engine for two, for unit five. Uh, okay, and then it's utils. Uh, utils. Uh, so here they use uh, Java event and Java call. Okay, for AWS Java event and Java call, I think the two should be enough. And uh, then finally it's build. Uh, build I give a good format. I also use this one. It's build. Okay. So uh, this hello is a very simple. I just make it as a template. Uh, so, so this is all about uh, hello lambda. And in the future, I will copy with this hello lambda for other lambda functions. Uh, so this is hello lambda. Uh, and then uh, this is the hello function handler. Okay. Now, after this, uh, so uh, this is a template. Uh, you implement this one, and it handle request. So actually, this is the entry point of the lambda function. You have input, you have output, 
try to reuse the string as input and the string as output. You can also use any input type or output type. For example, you can use an object as input, and this object will be in the JSON format, and the output can be also a JSON format with another object or string or anything. So now let me, uh, let's say, is uh, AWS Lambda. You can upload the function to AWS Lambda to the up update. Okay. So uh, you can create a new function called hello function. Uh, hello function. And the next uh, uh, is a simple hello uh, lambda. Uh, hello lambda. And then you select I am row. Uh, I just create a row for the training lambda row. I use this row. Uh, and then this is an S3 bucket. I will uh, I will upload the, my Lambda function as zip file in the uh, training Lambda 1010, okay? And then others, you keep the same, then you see finish. It will wait for a while. Uh, after this one is done, then go back. Uh, go back to uh, S3, right? So you, if you go to training Lambda, so you can see hello function dot zip is there. And then you can go to the lambda function, you can call lambda. Then I have some other lambdas. So here you can see hello function. This is a hello function for lambda. Okay. It's a hello function. And the hello function you can you can test it. Uh, you can have a test. Create a new event. Uh, you just say my event. Uh, and the event JSON. So the template is just, uh, you can write an uh, edit as an input. Uh, I think uh, it's not in JSON, so I don't know if it can test it. Uh, template as, let's see. Okay, looks like uh, a string input is, uh, is a headache. Uh, not sure how to test a string. Should be a simple one. Uh, oh, I forgot one thing. In current videos, uh, if you search videos online, so most of the Lambda functions they write in Python uh, because Python is very easy. Uh, if you build in, in Lambda, there are lots of other headaches uh, need, you need to solve that. So let's go up for this one. I go back to the function. This is the hello function. Uh, now let's go from our uh, Eclipse. You can also run, you can, uh, let's say, you can run function on AWS Lambda. Enter the JSON format, uh, JSON input in your function. Uh, so it still wants a JSON. So if I input like Alice, I don't think it's, it will work. Okay. Put the path request body into JSON. So it looks like string is not a good input. Now let's do something else. New package. Uh, uh, sorry, I will copy this one. Uh, new package the model okay let's use a model say new class hello request uh, let's use a hello request add a name you get and setters so I'd better use an object instead of string okay then let's generate a uh, two string. Okay, this is hello request. Now after that, here I use a hello request, and then import it. This hello request it will be this one, and this is input dot get a name. I think this makes things clear. Uh, and then you can make a test from function. So 
I have a name equal to Alice. Okay, then invoke. So when you invoke it, it will upload the function automatically uh, to this one. So uh, what's, what's wrong with this? During the JSON passing. Oh, so here you run as the previous one. Now you run it again. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, by my experience, it's, uh, it's, it's really weird. So when you run as a test, it will run the previous uh, uh, file. Uh, and then you can run it again. Uh, after I will run it again. I don't know if you understand that. So every time you run it, and you will upload uh, the new code to the uh, AWS. And but you run with the old code, and if you run it again, okay, you run it again, invoke. Then this time is the latest code. So look like uh, I I I feel something wrong in the Eclipse, or I am not familiar with the, the how it is working. So uh, if you change your code and upload it directly, then you will face a trouble. For example, uh, hello to this one, and uh, and I add one line. Uh, I just add, add something else. I input request. Uh, input request. Uh, add input. Okay. Uh, this is hello request. So after I modify my code and uh, when I uh, when I upload the function again. I use the choose the existing lambda function, right? Hello function, and the next, and uh, this is the same. Everything is the same. And if I say finish, so fail to upload the project to lambda. Okay, you cannot upload the updated version. So it is really weird. I I try something, but don't worry. But if you run it, uh, for example, if you run function on AWS lambda, you say uh, this is uh, this. This is Bob. Then it's uploaded. See, this is the input, not the input request. Right? This is input. It's the older version. Then you run it again. If you say Bob, if you run it again, input request. Right? This is the latest version, and the latest version now is uploaded to AWS. Okay. Now let's come back. To this hello function, uh, and then this is the latest version. Uh, this let's refresh it. This six minutes ago, and then let's refresh it. 30, 31 seconds ago, right? That's the latest version. And uh, uh, if you go to the CloudWatch, so each lambda will create a CloudWatch event, so you can you can watch what happens for this function. A group. So you find the hello function. Yeah, this is hello function. Hello function, you can see you run those things starting from beginning and every occurring during the JS past JSON, right? That's the first time we have this this event. And then so then you have to say a hello name equals to Bob, right? You run several times, then then you run it again. Uh it's an input request, that's the latest one. From this one you can see this is the latest one. Uh, from from the Eclipse, uh, something is not correct. So every time I run it, I run the previous version. I run it again, then I run the latest version. Uh, it's like this. So if you want to up, if you update your code, uh, if you update your code, and you cannot update it uh, directly, you have to uh, use the run with. Uh, you have to run this. You, you cannot up upload the function because it it will exp uh, it will have an error. But you can even run the function on AWS Lambda. Every time you run it, it will upload it. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, really weird. Uh, this is really weird. So, uh, but I just tell you. So that's my experience on Eclipse uh, using the Lambda function. So this class we can stop here, uh, and uh, uh, the next class I will introduce more about the Lambda function. This is just a dummy example. Okay, thank you.